to calculate and pay. Madam Chair. Dr Duncan Webb. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. And I must say, uh, the introduction to tax legislation on the Finance and Expenditure Committee has been a surprising pleasure um, of my time in Parliament. Uh, and it was, I must say, um, interesting to sit in that select committee and just understand some of the tensions in tax law uh, and the real need to balance the department's demands for efficiency against the public's need. Uh, for workability and simplicity, and I must say the um, Select Committee received some very good advice um, that was, was really, really well balanced. And as we go through this uh, part three of the Act, it does look like a, uh, it, is, it has some technical aspects, but in fact um, really what it's about is assisting the IRD with its business transformation project and ensuring that they have information which is timely and accurate and so that the tax is paid as accurately and as timely as possible um, in a way that's most likely to be paid. Having said that, it's clear that in some cases that provision of inf information is an undue burden and it's quite right that we identify where the costs, whether they be costs and time or money, um, they're balanced against the usefulness of that information on time. So we look, for example, um, at the reporting of uh, tax information on paper or via the internet on, in, um, on my IR, the, the internet platform, uh, and the fact that some uh, some people using uh, my IR simply isn't feasible, and in those kinds of situations, the reporting at regular intervals at, uh, on payday uh, is really not appropriate because it simply takes too much time, it's too cumbersome, uh, and it's much easier, in fact, to do it uh, after the event. And so, at Select Committee, that was one of the important changes which was, uh, which was introduced. Similarly, and perhaps more technically, um, employers with shadow payrolls, overseas employers who in fact uh, are employing New Zealanders, uh, they indeed were not required to, uh, to do uh, reporting on a um, payroll basis. So there's another, um, another example. Uh, and also the transition, the payroll subsidy, the idea that um, payroll agents who provide that information uh, are able to be subsidised only a few cents per employee, but nevertheless it's some millions of dollars uh, that the revenue foregoes. Uh, the idea that that be uh, not taken away immediately, but it be reduced over time, because some of those small employers uh, are going to have to learn how to, um, how to uh, put those returns in, in a timely basis. So firstly that threshold is going to be lowered down to $50,000 rather than $500,000 in terms of PAYE, and the time for implementation is being pushed out ultimately to 2020. But having said that, this is part of the transformation project. I do think it's really important in this transformation project that we don't leave behind those people who, um, who still struggle with electronic filing and so on. We've got to have a tax system which accommodates uh, everyone. This part of the Act also deals with uh, resident withholding tax, tax on dividends and interest income. Um, one of the important uh, changes is in fact the increase of the non-declaration rate to what is essentially in our tax framework a penal rate of 45 per cent. That's to make sure that uh, people actually do give their banks or uh, the companies who are paying them dividends the IRD number, so that that matching process can go on and we can follow people's um, overall income. So that's an important move as well. The other area in, re in respect of resident withholding tax uh, was the requirement of payers of interests and dividends to report. Now this is a pretty well known uh, requirement. We know that our banks report to the IRD, um, but in fact what became clear was that there was numerous transactions where interest would be paid perhaps through family loans um, or other modest arrangements where the tax would be only a few hundreds or perhaps thousands of dollars. And in fact the, the um, liability for that, along with the costs and in fact the, fa the fact that the person 
uh, receiving or paying that income may not even know that it was captured um, by the Income Tax Act meant that it was entirely inappropriate. So a threshold of $5,000 um, for investment income was, was placed on that. So it's not required uh, to declare or to provide uh, that information to the revenue. So overall, obviously this is, a, this is an act which is intended to improve the Income Tax Act. It's really an administrative act to make it work better, uh, but it's good to see that through that select committee process we've managed to soften the hard edges of it, make it more workable, and this certainly will improve this uh, piece of legislation. Thank you, Madam Chair. Oh, the Honourable David Parker. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, can I thank